Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, go with me today to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and uh, verse 7. And we want to continue with what we've been on over the last uh, about three weeks, uh, the walk of faith. And the Lord said to us through Pastor Michelle, uh, he said five different things, but the first thing that he said was that we're entering into a season that will require the walk of faith. And that, that word require just really stuck out to me. And, you know, it's not anything to be concerned about. Here's what it means. There are things that God wants to do in the year upcoming that it will require faith to get. That's what it means. Hallelujah. The Lord said to us through a man of God, my wife and I, he said, the year coming up is going to be a very special year. And it is. Well, here's what I always say. If it's going to be a special year for us, it's going to be a special year for you. Because what gets on the head gets on the body. Amen. Amen. And that's why any word that we received, unless it's specific to a specific thing in our life, we claim it for y'all. That's just the way it is. Amen. And so he said it's going to require the walk of faith. Now, faith in, of course, in, in our circles, um, we get good teaching on faith. Faith for many Christians is uh, basically uh, a code word for weight. Well, brother, how you doing? Or do you have this? Well, I'm in faith about that. In other words, no. And I'm just waiting. Hanging on. Right? Just like, uh, uh, you know, Christians have code words. Like instead of saying they're worried, they say I'm concerned. Well, brother, how you doing? Well, I'm doing good, but I'm concerned about this code word. I'm worried. Right? Faith is not something you can be without. It's not something you can afford to be against. And it's not nothing. I remember all the years ago that the Lord started teaching us faith. And uh, he taught us faith, first of all, through Charles Capps. And, uh, of course, Brother Copeland and others. But I've, uh, faith is my calling. That's, That's what I'm called to do, is to preach and teach faith. Now, faith is not so much a subject that's taught. It's a spirit that's caught. And you have to catch it from a carrier. Everybody that's preaching faith doesn't know faith. Everybody that you talk about and talk about faith, faith can be taught as a subject. But faith is a what? It's a law. And there are principles that govern that law. There are principles that govern walking by faith. And when people hear walking by faith, what they generally boil it down to is not walking by what is seen. Well, not walking by what is seen is part of walking by faith, but it's not the totality. And so when people teach and preach that way, they fail to say a lot of things that they need to say about walking by faith. Hallelujah. You know, if you've been married for a while, in other words, more than a few years, you can pretty much say that marriage has begun to be pretty easy. Boy, I thought I'd get a bigger response than that. All the men went, mm. and all the ladies went, hallelujah. <laughs> Speaking by faith. <laughs> but, but, but here's the point. Why? Here's why. Because you get to know the person you're married to. And you both begin to what? To adapt to each other. I'm not talking about putting up with stupid stuff, right? I mean, you begin to adapt to one another. Because in the beginning, if you ever had an argument, anybody in here ever have an argument? Oh. (laughs) 
sounds enthusiastic. <laughs> but you, you know what you had an argument over? Here it was. Something that didn't matter. Generally. Generally. Some of them mattered. But what was it? A different way of thinking. He was stubborn and you wouldn't give. He wouldn't change and you wouldn't change. Well, what's the result? Argument. Because, right? And as you grew up you, and, you, and you walked out that marriage, here's what you figured out. That really don't matter. Right? And, and you really begin to enjoy the differences. Is anybody at that place in your marriage, you kind of enjoy the differences? Hallelujah. <laughs> but isn't that wonderful? So marriage is easy. The more you do it. Faith is not hard. Just different. If faith is taught by somebody and it sounds difficult, they're not teaching it right. If you go away thinking you can't do it, you didn't hear it right. Because faith is given to every born-again believer at salvation for the purpose of receiving everything from God. And God didn't make it complicated. And so when you see people say, Where's God, I'm walking by faith. Grant, write it down. They're not. Because Faith is joy and peace in believing. Faith is not straining. In, in the spirit, your, your spiritual juggler veins are not bulging. It's not it. You're going to hurt yourself. Amen. Faith is a flow. Faith is a flow. Amen. And when you're in faith, you don't have to tell anybody. Because you're in faith. Hallelujah. You understand? And, and when you're standing in faith, you owe nobody an explanation. It's nobody's business what your stand is about. Faith is personal. See, that's why sitting in this room, you don't know who's getting faith right now, and you don't know who has faith. Well, bless God, if they had faith, that would change. Now, wait a minute, hang on. The judgment that you judge, that's how you'll be judged. See, I don't want that. So here, here's my point. Faith is personal. Not like the world says that your religious faith is personal. Your faith, given to you by God that comes from the Word, is personal. It's, 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 it's either working or not working because of us. Not because of the other person. Not because of the devil. Not because of the circumstance. Because of me. If my faith is working, it's because I'm working it. If it's not working, I'm not working it. Well, now, Pastor, you know the devil hinders. The devil can hinder nothing that is of God. He can't hinder it. He can hinder you. He can fight your mind and fight your emotions, but he can't stop anything. Is, is he defeated? Yes. What? Yes. You really believe that? Yes. Then why would you ever blame him for your problem? Why would you ever take the time to put the blame on somebody that has lost already? See, it's what you believe. You'll see this in a moment. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. It's very familiar. You can quote it by heart. For we walk by faith, not by sight. But notice now this is a parenthetical statement. Parenthetical statements are there for the purpose of explanation. And it wasn't added by the translators. Paul put it there in that, line, in that, in that, in that manner as explanation. The, the, the chapter before, chapter 4, uh, chapter 5, is all talking about us walking by faith in this physical body. In other words, there's a day coming when we're going to have a glorified body. There's a day coming when we're going to be present with the Lord, right? And Paul says, but we're walking this by faith right now. 
Because we know to be in the body is to be absent from the Lord, but we know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And he said, one of these days we're going to be absent from the body and we're going to be present with the Lord, but right now we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. The Amplified Bible says, for we walk by faith, we regulate our lives and conduct ourselves by our conviction." And then the last part of that verse says, not by sight or appearance. We walk by faith. We regulate our lives, conduct ourselves by our conviction, not by sight or appearance. So notice we regulate our lives by faith. The word regulate, it simply means to control or maintain the rate or the speed of a machine or a process so it operates properly. To control or maintain the rate or speed of a machine or a process so it operates properly. So it regulates our life. If you've ever had a machine or a car that had a governor on it, you know, if you had a car with a governor on a company car, it governs the speed, it regulates the speed. You can't go but a certain amount of speed because there's a regulator, there's a governor on it. Faith regulates our life. All right? In other words, I conduct my life by faith. My life operates properly when it's regulated by faith. But here's the thing. If I don't regulate my life by faith, it's impossible to not walk by what is seen. I can't do it. No one can. If you don't regulate your life by faith, you cannot help but to walk by what is seen. And many try to not walk by what is seen without regulating their lives by faith. And you can't do that. You cannot not walk by what is seen if you're not regulating your life by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Weiss Bible says, for through faith we're ordering our manner of life, not by something seen. So through faith, I order my manner of life. So whatever that entails to you, your, your manner of life, uh, 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 your, your victory, your, your uh, 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 prosperity, whatever it is, the, the, the happiness in your home, you're, you're ordering your manner of life by faith. Now, Romans 1.17 says something. The, uh, I'll read it from the Weymouth translation. It says, For in the good news, a righteousness which comes from God is being revealed, depending on faith and tending to produce faith. As the Scripture has said, the righteous man will live by faith. So notice, now when you hear people and they say, well, I'm living by faith, what do you mean? What do you mean I'm living by faith? Because when someone says that, what are they saying? Well, you know, brother, I'm living by faith. Well, what does that mean you don't have a job? Right? Or, you know, most people that say that are depending on somebody else and calling it faith. Amen. I, I had a person call me one time and they were asking me and the ministry to, to help them in a certain area. It was, a, it was a, uh, uh, another ministry. And uh, the Lord had not directed me to help them. I looked at my heart, and the Lord didn't direct me to help them. And so I said, uh, no. I said, uh, we're not going to help because the Lord hadn't directed us to help. Hallelujah. Now, I, th this person knows the principles of faith, and I'm, I'm not saying they didn't have faith, but they made a statement to me that, 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 that made this so clear. They said, well, you're right. They said, Lord, they say you're right. They, they, here's what they said. They said, that is correct. 
And they said, I really have to continue to walk by faith and not to depend on people. You understand? You can slip over into depending on people or depending on a job or depend not you understand what I mean by this? And call it walking by faith. But if there's a hiccup in something, then we will see if it's a walk of faith. If it was regulating your life. If faith is regulating your life, what happens doesn't affect you. Because faith is ordering the manner of my life. And what's the manner of life in faith? Joy and peace and believing. Amen. Now, living by faith is conducting your life as if you're all that God says you are. And that you have all God says that you have. Now notice, not like you will be that way or you will have, you are and you have it now. That's walking by faith. I am everything God says I am now and I have everything God says I have now. Now, why is that important? That the, the verse we read, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 in the Amplified Bible, it says we regulate our lives by faith, and, 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 and it used the phrase here, and conduct ourselves by our conviction, not by something seen. Hebrews 11, 1. And I'll read it to you from a couple translations because I want you to see something here. Verse 1 in the Weiss Bible says, Faith is the title deed of things hoped for, the proof of things that are not being seen. The Phillips translation says, Now faith means that we have full confidence in the things we hope for. It means being certain of things that we cannot see. Now notice these words. Title deed. Full confidence. Being certain. All of, those, all of those are contained in faith. All of them. Faith, by definition, is the conviction of the truth of anything. Or being convinced that something's true. So all of those meanings are contained in faith. Title deed, being certain. Full of confidence. When, when I have a title deed to something, it regulates the way I interact with that thing. Because I have the title. Amen. If you have a title to a red F-150 pickup, and someone says, do you have a red F-150? Yes, I do. Well, where is it at? It's not in your driveway. Yeah, but I got it. Because I have the title. That regulates what you believe. I'm convinced because I have the title. I don't need to see it. Yeah, but it's not, it's not in your driveway. Somebody might be driving it, but I got it. Because I got the title. If you don't have a title, you don't have a truck. You don't own it. You can have one, but if you don't have a title, there's no way of proving that you own it. Faith is the title deed. If I got faith, I own it. I, I have it now. It's mine now. I don't need to see it in the driveway. I have it because I got the title to it. That, that is conviction. That's conviction. That's being convinced. Most people that you know, when they say they're in faith, they're not convinced. They're just trying to believe. They're not convinced. Faith is knowing. Faith is conviction. Faith is I know I have it now. It's not a good confession. I'm not just confessing I have it. I have it. I have it now. Right now. It's mine. Right now. Why? I got the title deed. I got the title deed. When, when you got born again, everywhere you got born again, in, in the church, on the street, 
somewhere else, somebody witness to you. There, there was two things that happened. Number one, you became convicted that you were a sinner. People will say, well, who convicted me? The Holy Spirit. All right? So you were convicted, first of all, that you needed to be saved. You were convicted, second of all, what? That Jesus could save you. And what's the Bible say? It says you were saved how? By grace through? Through what? By grace, God's unmerited favor, God's willingness to show His favor and His mercy to you, even though you didn't deserve it. But that was by, through faith. Whose faith? Your faith. When did that faith come? When you got convinced that you needed a Savior. When did you get a Savior? When you became convinced you needed one. What happened? Something was convicted your heart. You became convicted in your heart that you were a sinner and you needed a Savior. And when faith showed up, what else showed up? The Savior. Hallelujah. So are you saved? How do you know you're saved? Now here's what a lot of people will say. Well, bless God, because I said the sinner's prayer means nothing. Means nothing. There are people spouting prayers today by the millions that don't believe a word they're saying. Well, because bless God, my name's in the Lamb's Book of Life. Really, you've seen it? You don't even know if it's there. Where's it at? What page? Who wrote it down? No, you're not saved because your name's in the Lamb's book of life. You're saved because you became convinced that you needed to be saved. And as a result of your faith, as a result of your conviction, your name was written in the Lamb's book of life. You, you, it didn't get in the book of life, and then you got convicted. It, it was You were convicted, and then it was put in the Lamb's book of life. So you're saved. Anybody sinned in here since you've been saved? Well, thank you for being honest. But think about this. What happened to your salvation? What happened to your salvation when you sinned? Nothing. Why? Because by faith, you went back and repented. And said you missed it. See, you're, regula- you're regulating your life by faith. You're, you're regulating your life by faith. What, why do you believe that when you miss the mark, you can go to God? Because he said, if you sin, be faithful to confess it. And I'll be faithful and just to forgive it. And to cl- you're regulating your life by faith. And nobody can convince you you're not saved. Amen. Not even the devil. He can't because you're regulating that part of your life by faith. Amen. And you'll, you'll even take him to the Scripture. I don't know, no, this is me. This is me. Whosoever comes unto the Lord, he'll in no wise cast out. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And that's what I did. I believed on the Lord. And what happened? I was saved. You can't, you can't make me doubt it. Right? You take that same knowing and transpose it to every area of your life. That's walking by faith. I'm regulating my life by faith. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! If I have the title deed, I'm fully confident. I'm completely certain. See, the difference difference between somebody, you you look at somebody and say, they have great faith, they have great conviction. They're absolutely certain. They're just more certain than you are. I've had people come to me before and say, well, you know, Pastor Michelle said this, and I said, no, she didn't. No, she didn't. Because she wouldn't say that. And they'll just kind of look at you like a frog in a West Texas hailstorm. You can't lie to me about somebody I've been married to almost 30 years. You just can't do it. I've had people come and say, well, you know, Pastor Caldwell said this. No, he didn't. No, he did not. 
Well, I heard it. No, you didn't. You misheard maybe, but you didn't hear that. See, I'm fully confident because I know. That I'm regulating my life by faith. The process of my life. Oh, hallelujah. When you're fully confident, you'll begin to expect. Walking by faith means living a life of expectation. I'm living a life of expectation. We, we say things like this, and it's, it's intended to help you. My, my wife and I ask each other regularly, what are we expecting? What are you expecting? What are we expecting? So I, where's our faith? I want to know where our faith is. Where, where's your faith? What are you believing for? If, if, if there's nothing being expected, there's no faith being expended. And faith doesn't have a permanent shelf life. That's why every day is a faith day. That's why you're building your faith every day. You're expending your faith. The, the, the principles of faith never change. Faith comes by hearing. Faith goes by saying. Faith grows by using. It, it, it has to be that way. And so he says here in Hebrews 11.1 1, that faith, this uh, uh, conviction or being convinced that something's true is the substance of things hoped for. Hope has a very short definition. It means to expect. That's it. Means to expect. That's important. To expect. In order to be fully confident and completely certain, I've got to be fully confident and completely certain of something. Amen. If you go to somebody and say, What are y'all believing for? And they say, Nothing. That's what they're getting. Nothing. Nothing. Zero. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. So I have to be expecting. I say I have to be expecting. That that is where many miss it. You look at people and their lives are no farther along than they were 10 years ago. They're not expecting anything. Their financial situation is no better than it was five years ago. They're not expecting it to get better. Faith always leaves you better than it found you. God never leaves you in a deficit. So things should get better. <laughs> Lord, I'll say that. You can structure your life around your lack of walking by faith and call it God's goodness. When in reality, you're limiting your life because you're limiting what you'll believe. Now, I, I get in trouble sometimes when I say this, but y'all love me? Yes. What? Yes. Ah, I don't want to have to take that by faith. <laughs> you'll, you'll hear people and they'll make a statement, fixed income. You got to be careful because we're on a fixed income. You know what they start doing? Shrinking their life to fix their fi to, to match their fixed income. Where is it written that you got to be uh, 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 behind retirement age for your faith to work? How does 70 years old limit what God can do? As I read the scripture, you should have more the older you get. I'm just good. I got more now than I had when I started. And you know, that wasn't really very hard because I didn't have nothing. So just have a little bit more is better. But I got a lot more. 
and I'm not worried about it because I know how I got it. I got it by faith. But do you understand what I'm saying? You start shrinking your life based on the circumstances and call it faith. It's not faith, it's fear. Not regulating your life by faith. Tell your neighbor, get get your attention off me for a minute. Tell tell your neighbor, your life is going to just get better because you're in faith. You should try that one more time. Say, your life is just going to get better because you're in faith. Am I helping you? See, that you'll limit your faith. You'll limit what your faith is able to do when you start shrinking your life to match your circumstances. And here's the question. If you start doing that, what are you going to cut next month? And then what are you going to cut the month after that? Well, we're going to downsize. How far can you downsize? I mean, you'll be in a tent before you know it. You understand? God is not... (laughs) God is not limited to what I can produce. What I can produce is dependent on God. Well, God's dealing with me to go here, and there's no prospect. No prospect of what? Well, no natural prospect. Yeah, but God is dealing with you. What did the Bible say about Abraham? He went out what? Not knowing where he was going. How did he go? By faith. And what God ended up doing? Giving him the whole country. Well, God's doing me to take this job and it just don't look right. Could it be he's working on giving you the whole thing? Or could it be he's working on giving you your own thing? Right? But if I stay where it requires no walking by faith, and I stay where it requires no expenditure of faith, I'll never know. I'll never know. I'll never know. There are people you know and I know, they will never know what God could have done for them because they never stepped out in faith and proved what God could do for them. That's regulating your life by faith. Walking by faith is not having some today and not having nothing tomorrow, but we're in faith. It's not faith. Faith is being convinced that I will have what I need all the time because I own it. Mm. So I have to be expecting That's where many miss it. They try to walk by faith without developing the image of what they're walking in faith for. I I told you about the lady I know, relative of mine, that was believing for her kids to come home. She had went through a divorce, and and there had been a lot of of deception and lies, and, and she had kids that she was believing to come home. And every night, she'd make those kids' beds, turn them down, make them in the morning, turn them down at night. That was crazy. No, that was faith. Hallelujah. You know, she got relationship with all of her kids today. I don't know if it was perfect. I don't even know if she was perfect. But at some point, you got to regulate your life by faith. Amen. That's why God tells us over and over in His Word who we are. Right? John 3, 16, what does it say? You're loved by God. For God so loved the world. Is that right? Hallelujah. 1 John 3, 2 says, we are the sons of God. Now, beloved, it does not, it, it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when we see Him, we shall be like Him. And right now, we are the sons of God. Is that right? Now, think, think about that. That doesn't just mean you're saved. 
Whose son are you? You're God's. What does God have that he can give you? The kingdom. If I'm a son of God, I own it. Glory to God. That's regulating your life by faith. I was teaching along these lines one time, and a guy told me the next day, he said, I finally see why you talk so much about ownership. And I thought it only took 12 years. But 12 years or 12 days or 12 months, they got it. Amen. This is a simple illustration. But when I pull up to my house, I don't knock on the door. I own the place. I have a garage door opener. You can't lock me out of my house. Amen. It's my house. I said, I said it's my house. Does that make sense? It's mine. What God said is yours is yours. You are a son of God. He's given you the kingdom. Hallelujah. Is that right? He said, first, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, we are of God. But now of Him are you in Christ, who has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. So you are of God, preposition of. That's the channel that you came from. That's the substance that you're made of. I am of God. Is that right? Oh, glory to God. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says you're a new creature, a new creation. Now, we know these things, but I'm saying this to you for a reason. The, the verse 21 of the same chapter says we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So all of those things are a picture of what we are. So we can live that way by faith. That's what I am. Not what I will be. That's what I am. I am loved of God. I am, I am God's son. Amen. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am a new creation. Now, right now, right now, I'm regulating my life by faith. Amen. And what, what does the enemy attack? What you are. What you have. <laughs> the enemy never comes and says, you'll never be that. He says, you're not that. You're not righteous. Look, you just messed up today. Well, if you're living by faith, you don't even let that phase you. You just keep going. Yes, I am. But boy, he talks about how you're not going to make it financially, and it's like a kidney punch. Boom. Oh, Lord, what if, oh, yeah, oh, Lord. And how I got, Lord, I got little kids. How am I ever going to put them all through college? And oh, Lord, oh, God, oh, Lord, oh, You're just about as far as walking away from faith as you can be. Walking in faith as you can be. Does God know how many children you got? What's that? Yes. Hey, hey, what's, what's that? Yes. So will he add all things to your whole family every day? Or just you? No, the whole family. My family's blessed because I'm blessed. Is that right? Look at Romans chapter 4 and verse 18. Living by faith is seeing what God said and believing that picture more than you believe what you can see. This is what God said. See, a lot of people call not walking by what you see, and it's really, it's denial. Well, I went to the doctor, and they did a, a scan, and this is what they found, but I told them I don't have it. But you do. That's not walking by faith. That's not not walking by what you see. What you see is there. Oh, I, I lost some faith people. Well, bless God, I don't receive that. Well, that's fine. You don't have to receive it, but it's there. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to allow my life to be regulated by faith. Right? Well, what does faith say? 2,000 years ago, I received my healing. But when stripes were laid on Jesus' back, according to the word, I was healed. 
when I got born again, that same healing vitality came into my body. Based on this, I'm healed. Now, what they see on the scan is irrelevant. Because the healing power in me will drive it out. The end result's I'm healed. That's regulating your life by faith. Uh, Romans 4.18, the Amplified Bible says, For Abraham, human reasoning for hope being gone, hoped in faith that he would become the father of many nations, as had been promised, so numberless shall your descendants be. Now notice this. Abraham had no reason for human hope. Because you'll hear people pre preach on this, and they'll say he didn't pay attention to his body. Careful how you say that. Because the Greek rendering says this, that he was perfectly aware of the deadness of his body. Yet he did not see it as a reason God wouldn't do what he promised. Perfectly aware. But what was, what was regulating his life? Faith. What did he attach that faith to? The hope God gave him. The picture God gave him. The expectation God gave him. If you're not spending time cultivating the image, there's nothing for you to add your faith to. Amen. Well, bless God. God's going to do this for us financially. Well, what's your picture? How much do you want to make? What, what, what do you want to make every month? What do you want God to do for you every month? How much of an increase do you need? Well, brother, the Lord knows, and He's waiting on you to get your faith wrapped around it. And you can't get your faith wrapped around it if you don't know how much you want or how much you need. There are people you know and I know, they can't tell you what it takes to run their household every month. The money just comes in and goes. And then they say they're believing God. You're, it's impossible. You can't. You can't believe God and not know what you got coming in and what you got going out. If you don't have enough, it's because you're not, you're not bringing enough in to cover your outgo. Or you're spending more than you make. And either way, you got to correct that. And you got to correct that so your faith can work properly. Oh, hallelujah. And Abraham, well, let me say this. He had a picture based on what God said. He owned that picture. I remember the day I owned victory financially. I own it. I own that image. You won't convince me otherwise. I see me as healed all the time. And that's why when they start talking about, well, this is going around, you'll hear me say, I don't mind telling you I'll never have it. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to be sick. I don't plan to be sick. I'm making no provision for being sick. Well, you never know. I know you might not, but I do. And make no mistake, if you don't know, it's coming for you. That's just the bottom line. Well, Pastor, that's hard. I know. I, I understand it's direct, but here's the thing. What I don't believe I'm free from is lurking in the shadows somewhere. And if I don't believe I'm free from it, I believe I can have it. Does the Bible say, no evil will befall you and no plague will come near your dwelling? Does it? Help me, help me, does it? Help me, does it? Then what are you supposed to believe? That it cannot come near me. Well, I knew so-and-so. I don't care who you knew. So-and-so is not the Bible. <laughs> Amen. Well, well Pastor, that's... You know, that's hard because I've been dealing with some stuff. Now you know how to deal with it. Amen. Do you understand? Well, I just don't understand. I've been confessing the Word. But do you own what you've been confessing? Do you believe it? Are you convinced about it? Just saying a bunch of confessions doesn't mean you're convinced. It means you know you should confess the Word. 
if you go to your device right now on any of your, any of your uh, 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 web engines, go to Google or whatever you use and type in healing confession, you'll get page after page after page after page of confessions that somebody else went through the Word and got and put on the website. And here's what people do. They go find 42 pages of somebody else's confession and print it out and just confess it by rote. They don't spend no time in the Word. They don't spend no time getting the Word about that in them. They just want to make a confession. Bless God, I'm the healed of the Lord. What happened? I was confessing the Word and I'm sick. You didn't own it. You weren't convinced that that was yours. Well, what if I go through a battle? You're convinced. It's got to go your way because you're convinced. Do you understand? Faith is simple. What I believe is what I receive. Listen, you might as well live by faith with the answer because it's out there. The curse hadn't went anywhere, but I'm redeemed from it. Do you believe that? See, do you own that? Are you convinced? Because the Bible says all of those sicknesses, all of those diseases are under the curse. I'm redeemed from the curse. I'm redeemed from the curse. You know what most people do? Am I helping you? I'm not saying you. Notice I said most people. You know what they do? They wait till they're in the throes of sickness to try to get rid of it. They never set up a barrier before it got there. And whatever you do, don't keep looking for an opinion that will finally validate your symptoms. Well, you know, I went to the doctor. I'll, I'll give you a story. You, you know, I got stories. I got four minutes. It means nothing. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, according to the clock, I got about four minutes. <laughs> There's a lady that I know. I know personally. Very good friend of my mother. And, and she went to the doctor and went to this doctor and said, there's a, a spot on your colon, and we, it's cancerous. And they said, we got to take your colon completely out, and you're going to live on a colostomy bag. And she talked to her husband. Her husband said, we need to get a second opinion. We need to get a second opinion. And uh, she went to another doctor. The doctor ran all the tests. The first doctor ran, looked at him, went over him, went over him, and said, I honestly, I frankly, I don't see what the first doctor saw. And he said, I see a spot about the size of a pinhead. He said, I, I, I think that that's radical. I don't, I don't see the reason to do that. You know what she did? Went back to the first doctor, had her colon taken out. There are people that will keep taking tests till they get a test that matches their symptoms. Yeah, but I want to be sure. They said you don't have it. Why would you keep looking for something that agrees with how you feel? Well, what if I have it and it's a, it, it's a missed test? Well, who are you depending on on the inside of you? Does the Holy Spirit know whether you're sick or not? I mean, I, I need to, I, see, this is what the Lord said to us, that we've got to come to another level of being led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. I've had, my, I've had the Holy Spirit tell me, you need to go and have that taken care of. And I've had the Holy Spirit tell me, it's nothing, don't worry about it. Now, I'm not telling you what to do, other than you've got to regulate your life by faith. And I... I you understand? If, if you go to the doctor and you take a test or you take a scan and they say you have that, it doesn't do you any good to say, no, I don't, that no, no, I don't, no, I don't, no, I don't. It's there. It, it's there. It's visible. You need to start engaging your faith and you need to start believing God. <sighs> Amen. 
Do you see that? Many will say, well, God can. Can what? You'll even hear people say, well, yeah, God can do anything but fail. That's exactly right. But understand what you're saying. What are you saying? If God can do anything, I want him to do it for me. Well, I just believe God will. Will what? What will God do? People will pat you on the hand and say, oh, brother, God will make a way. What do you mean by that? You need to look at them and say, what do you mean by that? God will make a way. I'm, I'm working on a new book called The Myth of the Wilderness Experience. Now, all that garbage about how the wilderness experience works for you and your dark times work for you, garbage. The only thing I know to say to that is, I don't know how you would write that in a book, but nonetheless, how does that translate? Uh, uh, glory to God. And, and I'm, I'm about done. I, I want to look at something from Joshua, and then I'll be done. And and what I'm trying to do is encourage you to take the faith, use your faith on the front end. Don't get behind. I've watched folks get behind and want and, and you're not guaranteed that you'll be able to catch up. This is what I've watched this over, over the years. Thankfully, I've I've had a lot more victories. In, in people with deadly diseases than failures. But, but I'm thinking of three individuals that, that God did a miraculous work in their life in the very beginning. And then they backed up. They let their foot off the accelerator. And then when, 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 when the disease reared up and flared up again, they had so depleted themselves of faith by not feeding their faith, they didn't have the strength to stand. And God had them healed. Hallelujah. You know, Brother Hagin said something. His, his sister had been diagnosed with cancer one time, and, and the, the, she had made it. The Lord had touched her. A few years later, she got the same diagnosis. And he was going to the Lord and praying about her, and he kept asking the Lord to heal her. And the Lord finally spoke to him and said, No, don't ask me to heal her no more. And he said, Well, why, Lord? He said, because she's had ever how many years it was, she's had all these years, and she never built her faith. She's never listened to one radio program you have, never ordered one of your books, asked you for them, has spent no time building her faith about healing. And the Lord said, it'd just be better for her to come on home. Now, you may think that's an extreme example, but, but what was the Lord saying? I don't love her? No. She's had this whole opportunity to build her faith and get the victory over this and hasn't taken the time to do it. Right now today, you have the ability and the opportunity and the time to build your faith as much as you want for whatever may come into your life. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, I'll, I'll hurry with this. You'll remember that the, the Lord said, now Jericho was straightly or tightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, see, 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 I have given into your hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of Allah. Jericho was tightly shut up because of them, and God said, look, Joshua, I've given it to you. Is that right? I've given it to you. So he had a picture of Jericho having been turned over to him. And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 30, it says, By faith, the walls of Jericho fell. Is that right? By faith. Now what was his faith attached to? The city's been given to me. Your faith working is not up to God. It's up to you. What I get from God is not dependent on God. It's dependent on me. Because we talk about a finished work. It all belongs to us. Amen. If it does, then I own it. 
I just have to go get it. What, I'll, I'll leave you with this. What did Jesus say? He said, from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. That, that's, it's not talking about violence like, like we think of violence. It's, it's by force. They take it. They go take it. Well, who's the kingdom belong to? Who did Jesus in the book of Luke chapter 18, who did he say he gave it to? Us. What do you got to do? You got to go take it. How do you take it? By faith. By faith. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And just spend time convincing yourself. Spend time building that image. Close your eyes for a moment. And, and I just sense this as we're closing. There are people in here, you're believing for things. This, this is so important. There, there are people in here believing for new homes. Uh, not just because you want a new home. You need a new home. You need a big place. You need a nice place. So that's the first level. And, and, and then there are people, that's just your desire. Whatever it may be. You got to build, spend time getting that image cultivated on the inside of you. And I'll say it like the Lord said to me to say it. You don't want to keep living off other people's handouts. You want to live on what you got by your own faith. Because what you get by faith, you'll never lose. Oh, hallelujah. So think about it right now, right now. Think about that image. What are you wanting to cultivate? It could be your body. It could be your family. It could be your home. It could be your finances. Don't don't be afraid to put a number on it. And don't be afraid to make it a big number. Give yourself plenty of cushion. We're not talking about your needs. We're talking about what your family needs. I mean, we're talking about college. You got, you got to start right now. Hallelujah. You getting it? What about your house? Maybe, maybe it's just you need to see your house paid off. We'll see it right now with a paid in full stamp over it. It's paid in full. And every time you pull up to that address, you say, one, two, three, Liberty Way is paid in full. Amen. I want you to build that image. Well, we need a better house. How much better? What kind of better? How many garages do you want? How many bedrooms do you want? How many bathrooms? What's in what part of town? Faith doesn't say just, just any old thing, Lord, just something better. No, you, you'll get yourself in a mess. Are you seeing it? I say, are you seeing it? Now, you're getting something you can attach your faith to. And once, once you start attaching your faith to that, don't let anything come in and supersede that image. That's what you're pressing into. Some of y'all need to see yourself debt-free, owing nobody anything. Owing no man anything. Oh, hallelujah. Some of you need to see yourself in an office with supervisor on the door. Or owner or manager, whatever you're believing God for. I'm taking a moment because you need to see it. Faith never operates beyond your ability to see. Oh, hallelujah. You getting it? You got it? I say this out loud. Father, I see what you want to do for me. And by faith, I attach myself to it. I receive it. I have it. I own it right now in Jesus' name. Satan, you take your hands off of what I own. 
Don't mess with it again. Don't mess with it one more time. You're done in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. That's it. I own it. I have it. I own it. I have it. Hallelujah. Let's stand up today. Thank the Lord for His presence. Hallelujah. The, the house that we live in, I, I got a picture of one uh, years ago. Not the exact home because obviously I didn't know that was the home we were going to move into. It but looks almost identical. And I put it on the whiteboard in my office. And, and I put my verses about houses, houses around that. And I would have people come in my office. And some of them would look, and they'd never said it to me. They know better. But they would look at that, and they would think, how in the world are they ever going to own a home like that? It's called faith. I have that home today. I live in that home. And if you go in my house right now on the refrigerator, there's a picture of our house that we live in, and it has a red stamp over it paid in full. I will write a check for the fullness of that house. I will pay it off. Well, how do you know that? I've already got it by faith. It's not, I, it's not something i got to try to do. I'm going to do it because I've already got it. Well, that's a lot of money. Faith don't look at numbers. Faith doesn't look at numbers. Faith looks at the picture, not the numbers. You missed it, but we'll keep working on it. Faith doesn't look at the numbers. It, what's the picture? If you got the picture, faith doesn't care the number that's attached to it. Hallelujah. Don't forget, 6 o'clock tonight, we'll be back. We'll be ministering on the word that the Lord gave us for 2023 this year, and we're believing for good things. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, thank you today. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the, the people that you've brought to hear the word of God, we give you the praise and the glory for their lives in the name of Jesus. Come on, say it with me. The vision of our church will always be to build people's faith and frame their world by the word of God. You and I will always be world changers. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for this message. We would love to hear from you. If you have a prayer request or want to share how this message has helped you, send us an email at main at buildfaith.net. This message and many more materials are available to you free of charge, can be found at buildfaith.net or at any of our location media stores. As always, keep the switch of faith turned on and build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God.